Now, digital technologies is the second subject of the technologies learning area. Now, digital technologies is new for most of you, probably all of you, in terms of how it is taught in the technologies or in the Australian curriculum. Many of you will have done some computer education throughout your own learning, but will almost certainly have had a different focus to what technologies education or digital technologies is today. There's been quite a shift from learning about how to use digital technologies, such as how to use it to create a web page or how to use a word processor or, and things of that nature. Now it's focused on how to create new digital technologies. So it's a big shift. Now, part of that, the most obvious one, is students learning how to program, how to write their own computer programs, create their own computer games, for example, their own apps, their own web pages, but from a coding perspective. So not just using a tool to make a web page, learning about the code, the HTML and CSS code behind the web page that makes it work. So it's very much learning about the technical aspect of the tools. So it's not learning how to use the tools, but how to make new tools. Now, of course, this is going to be challenging. Most of you aren't programmers. I don't expect you to be. But you will need to be able to teach your students how to program. Now, at a primary school level, it's not that hard. The level that you're going to be teaching them is not super complex. It will be new, and of course that means it's scary, but you are going to be learning about how to utilize a whole range of different techniques and tools to teach your students about coding and a range of other things. So, the other key thing you need to understand in terms of the curriculum is that there are two separate aspects of technologies and digital technologies. There is digital literacy, and there is the digital technology subject. Now, digital literacy is part of the set of um, general capabilities. So these are things that students learn in all of their learning areas, all of their subjects. So they'll learn digital literacy when they're doing mathematics or English or health and PE. They might use a video camera. They might use a spreadsheet. They might use um, a scientific probe linked up to some data logging tool as part of their science um, studies. So they're going to be using technology all the time and learning about how to use technology, what you may have experienced as part of your computer education is digital literacy now, taught in all of the subjects, including digital technologies. When we use a new technology, um, such as say an AI application, that's not something we're actually, we're using it to help them with their learning of digital technologies. So it's an ICT, it's a part of a digital literacy to learn how to use that technology to help them in their learning of digital technologies. But they could also be just as effectively using it in learning about mathematics or science or English or whatever else. So there, are, there is a set of expectations around digital literacy. Now that said, there is an expectation that you will teach certain digital literacies as part of digital technologies, because some of it just overlaps so nicely. Um, so in particular around social and ethical uses of technology. So when it's inappropriate to do certain things with technology, um, these are things that are commonly taught as part of the technologies learning area and digital technologies as part of that. So again, we'll unpack these, what they mean after you've read the documents and explored them in a little bit more detail. So the other key aspect around digital technologies is the concept of computational thinking. Now, this is around seeing the world from an understanding of digital technologies. An example I give is that when I was in my undergraduate studies, about the same stage you are at now, one of my subjects involved writing a computer program for a word processor. Now, some of you would have created web pages using a, a web page editor, and you've used tags around different words. 
to make the words larger or smaller, or change their color, make them bold or italicized. So a word processor so uses exactly the same techniques. And in programming it, you write a computer program that you can choose to make a, a word bold and it will put those tags. You don't see that in the text, but they're hidden away. You might choose to put different paragraphs in or different, different other formatting. Now, because I learned how a word processor is written, and I knew the programming language related to that in terms of how it actually works. Throughout my career, I've been work as a teacher, I've had a lot of experience working with business education teachers. And they used to teach Word in huge detail. All of the different functions and menu items of Word, far more understanding of the software in terms of the application Word than I had any understanding of. But time and time again, they would have problems with their formatting or other things that would go wrong that they couldn't solve and they couldn't work out why it had gone wrong. They didn't understand that the, the software was run by a computer program that had these tags that put these different formats in and structured how what they chose from all their menus actually made the software do. And I could solve their problems. I had computational thinking and understanding of the technology at its core level that I could solve those problems for them. But they didn't have that computational thinking. They had a vastly superior understanding of the software and how to use that software but they didn't understand how it actually worked. So that is what we are trying to achieve with computational thinking. Teaching students about how software works in terms of coding and writing their own software, how data works in relation to software and how things in relation to data work in terms of websites and how databases and things of that nature work, how robotics and automation processes work by making them and creating their own solutions to those problems. So that when they come across issues in using software in the future and using a robot or any other different aspect of digital technologies, they will have an understanding at a fundamental level to be able to solve problems in relation to that because they can think about the world and about technology from that perspective. So that's computational thinking. And we'll be exploring how to develop that throughout this course. Students will also learn about various digital systems, about how a computer system works, how a computer and a keyboard and a mouse and a printer and all that work together, and importantly, how networks work and how the internet works. And again, you've, probably, you've been using the internet for a long time yourself, but you probably don't have a real understanding of how it actually works. And more importantly, when it doesn't work, or when it slows down, or when there are failures and things that go wrong. By understanding how it works, you'll have that computational thinking, or specifically your students, which is the focus of this course, will have that understanding from an understanding of how the internet works and various other computer-based systems. Likewise, coding and programming, students will unpack and learn how um, software works and why it works by various programming languages that they'll engage with. And they'll learn about data literacy literacy and analysis of data. They'll also learn about cybersecurity and digital citizenship, about when and when not to do various things with technology. And they'll learn about innovation and looking for opportunities, that innovative aspect of technologies education, how to create new opportunities as new technologies emerge. At the moment, we're seeing AI emerging, and that's opening up a whole range of new opportunities. And so students need to be exploring how they may be able to create new solutions to problems through the use of that particular technology by understanding how it works and how it can be applied in various ways. So that's digital technologies. We're looking at digital systems and how those various systems work. We're looking at data information. We're looking at algorithms and programming. An algorithm is simply a way we describe a series of steps to do something and we program a computer to follow those steps. We call that a programming language. So as you did with design and technology, I want you now to go through and look at the digital technologies curriculum documents. Look at the curriculum website, 
the various aspects of that that you need to be able to understand in some detail. I also want you to look at the digital literacy um, element in relation to the general capabilities of digital literacy. You may also want to look at some of the other general capabilities because they'll become important as we go through things, particularly in week three when we look at various concepts. But have a look at those curriculum documents now and then do the quiz as part of your log of learning activities.